Hello, this is Justin Williams with the Wolfpacker Podcast. I'm joined today by a special guest, or I guess not really a guest, but rather a co-host. He's the managing editor of the Wolfpacker Magazine, also managing editor of the Wolverine and Blue and Gold Magazines for Notre Dame and Michigan. But today we're going to be talking about NC State Wrestling as they head to the 2021 NCAA Wrestling Championships. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us. We're on Google Podcast, Apple, uh, Spotify, all that good stuff, wherever you listen to podcasts. So subscribe, give us a review. You can always listen to us on thewolfpacker.com as well. And while you're at thewolfpacker.com, use promo code PAC60 for a free 60-day trial. Um, but again, joined by Ryan Tice, managing editor of the Wolfpacker magazine, our resident wrestling expert, if you will, a former <laughs> pack wrestling alum. He describes himself as a uh, tackling dummy, but I would give him the credit for all of the success NC State had during his time with the Wolfpack. But Ryan, let's get kicked off with this wrestling championships preview. We plan on doing these short little videos to recap each day of the championships, but a lot of good stuff to get into. So I guess let's start with the obvious. Where do you have NC State in your bracket and how, how high can this Wolfpack team finish? Yeah, Justin, I'm always excited to talk about wrestling and NC State wrestling. So appreciate the opportunity here. Um, you know, it, it's funny, like everyone's used to brackets in March with the basketball tournament, but the NCAA wrestling tournament bracket is so different. It is uh, 640 matches that if you want to really like play out how the teams are going to finish, you have to determine 640 individual match results. So, I mean, it's, you know, here's my bracket that's I've spent way too much time on filling it out. How many pages um, is that? It's 10 pages. Each weight class is a page. Wow. So, um, with handwriting that probably nobody but myself can decipher, but I'm able to decipher it. And I've got a, you know, I have got like a access to this thing that someone puts out online. I'll probably retweet it just to give the guy some help. Cause it's awesome. But he actually has like an Excel document you can download and you just put the results that you think are going to happen in each match in, and it spits out the team scores for you. And, so simple question, simple answer to your question, I should say, is NC State, I really think, could finish as high as second nationally at the NCAAs. Um, I, you know, I, we said this before when we talked wrestling. No, I, I was heavy favorite. I don't know if anyone can catch them. They have they are just absolutely loaded. Um, but outside of that, it's pretty open. Uh, NC State could finish as high as second, probably not favored to finish in second place. I just was looking at um, one of the Flow Wrestling, a website that does a lot of great wrestling coverage, did a little exercise where the top seeded wrestler won every match throughout the bracket, and then they totaled up team scores from that. From that, NC State was in third place. They were eight and a half points behind number two, Penn State, two points ahead of number four, Virginia Tech. And the top four in college wrestling is really where you want to be. That's the what they call trophy position. The top four teams get an NCAA trophy, and that's what everyone's always talking about is when they want to win trophies at the NCAA championships. That's finishing among the top four. Only two ACC teams have ever done that, Virginia Tech a few years ago, and then NC State did it in 2018. Um, so that's – and, and both of those teams were fourth. So if NC State finishes higher than fourth, again, I think that's entirely possible. That would be the highest finish ever for an ACC team. Um, now you talk about my bracket. Where do I have them? I have them. I'm looking up at my bracket right now. I have them in fourth place right now. But I'll say this. I did not put bonus points into my bracket because they are just – the seeds are a mess this year with the shortened season and everything like that. So um, it's very tight. I have from third place all the way down to uh, seventh place is a difference of about 10 team points, which is very close. Again, that's without bonus points factor factored in. So that can, that can close and jumble those teams up. But I really think that the spot for NC state is in that third, fourth area you put a gun to my head. I'm, I'm going to say that's where they're going to finish at. 
Um, we can talk individuals later, but I think that would be one heck of an accomplishment um, in this weird COVID year with everything that's happened with that. But um, gun to my head, I'm saying NC State's going to finish in third or fourth place at the NCAAs. Well, you're tougher on the Wolfpack than I am. I've, uh, I've got NC State winning the whole thing in my bracket. Now, granted, full disclosure, I've got about as, as much wrestling knowledge as you do in your left pinky. But I'm picking <laughs> the pack. It's their month. The women are going to win the national title in basketball. Uh, the wrestling are going to win the national championship in wrestling. Uh, the swimming and diving team, they're going to do great this week. So a lot of great stuff happening. Who knows? Maybe the men's basketball team can even come home with the NIT title in Texas. Um, but for those interested in watching the action unfold tomorrow, Ryan, when does the action start for the Wolfpack uh, wrestlers competing? And what are the matches that you should be looking out for tomorrow specifically? Yeah. So there, there's a, in this COVID world, like all things, it's changed and impacted the NCAA wrestling championships. So they're going with a little bit of a different format than usual. Um, I've got the schedule here in front of me. It's in central time. So I'm, I'm having to do some quick math here. Uh, hopefully I get it all right. But 11 a.m. is when wrestling starts and they're going to do the first round for 125 through 157. And then I think there'll be a little bit of a break. And then at uh, 2 p.m., they're, they're going to do the first round for 165 through heavyweight. So it's a much different format than usual. Um, then that would be 6 p.m. We're going to do the second round and wrestle backs for the first five weight classes. 9 p.m. is going to be the start for the heavier guys in that second round and wrestle back. So it's going to be a long day once it finally gets going at 11 a.m. Um, in terms of, of matches to watch, uh, th there should be some really good ones involving NC State wrestlers. Uh, a lot of the, the Wolfpack guys got seated pretty high, and that usually means you're a big favorite in the first round. You know, obviously that's just how the seating works. I don't need to explain that to everybody. But um, so that means not, you know, uh, barn burner matches, I would say. But I will say this. At 125 pounds, Jacob Camacho has one of the best second round matches in the entire tournament, in my opinion. He'll be taking on 11th seed, 11th seeded Dylan Ragason of Michigan. Uh, Ragason's a guy that surprised everybody uh, this offseason when he placed second at senior nationals. Jacob Camacho is a guy who's beaten former NCAA finalists. He only has two losses this year. Both are to the number two seed, Sam Latona. And we'll get into it later, but Camacho is actually a really popular pick to out-wrestle his seed and finish second in the bracket, make the NCAA finals. Um, that's just not me talking. That's people in the wrestling media's opinion. So not just a NC State homer speaking there, saying that Jacob Camacho uh, could possibly make the NCAA finals. Um I'm paging through my bracket real quick because I know there was one other second round match I wanted to talk about, and I'm, it's not coming to me off the top of my head. So if you give me one second, I think it's um, somewhere in chapter four of your bracket. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thomas Bullard at 165 pounds. He's going to have the if he wins in the first round, which it, it, that's a match to watch. He's wrestling a guy that beat him earlier this year, and Thomas, uh, excuse me, William Fermato from App State. That was a 4-0 match in the regular season, but that was Bullard's first match. He was coming off an injury, might not have been up to speed, but that's a, a great rematch there. If he wins it, the reward is the winner gets to face the number one seed, Alex Marinelli of Iowa. So um, that's something to definitely watch for. I think his twin brother, Daniel Bullard, the eight seed at 174, has a great second round match. When you're the eight seed, that means you get the nine seed in round two. So that's the closest match of the round. That should be a really good one. Those are the ones I would circle uh, to look out for tomorrow when they're doing the first and second rounds off the top of my head. But there, there's really going to be a, a lot of good matches. Uh, what other second round match I'll, I'll actually throw out there? Deontay Wilson, the heavyweight. He's undefeated this year, won the ACC championship, but he got stuck in the 10 seed. That means he'll have the number seven seed round two if they both if the higher seeds prevail 
in the first round, and that's Ethan Laird of Ryder. He's a guy that wrestled 197 pounds last year, so Wilson will have a big-time size advantage, but Laird does have some really quality wins this year, and I think that's a match that everyone in the wrestling world is looking forward to uh, in terms of second-round matches. And so those times that you gave us, those are in Eastern time, correct? Yeah, it, okay. those, those are Eastern time. Okay, yes. just making sure. And for those at home listening, how can you watch these matches unfold if you wanted to watch? Yeah, so ESPN will be uh, ESPN three will be doing coverage where you can kind of pick and choose what mats you want to watch. Um, you know, Pack Wrestle on Twitter at Pack Wrestle does a great job of of updating ahead of time. So and so is coming up on mat x because there's eight mats going at the same time uh in the first and second round so that's the best way um i can probably tell you to, to track all that they do a great job of putting the mat assignments out there so you can kind of follow along on on that twitter account um and then just pull up the certain mats you want i do believe espn u i think will be doing what they call uh whip around coverage i believe and that that's where they kind of pick and choose what they're showing Sometimes they do like a split screen. Sometimes they focus on on certain matches, a guy with a big story or high seed or something like that. But the the way to do it uh, is to definitely go on the ESPN three and and pick and choose. Know what mats you're looking for, and then you pick and choose those. Well, thank you for that information, Ryan. You gave us your uh, team prediction. You have NC State in your top five nationally. We'll see how it ends up all unfolding. But of the individuals, who do you think could take the individual NCAA titles home. Yeah, there. I, I can't believe we're, we've done a wrestling podcast for as many minutes as we have, and I don't even think we've mentioned Hayden or Trent Hydley, the NC State stars. Uh, both of them got number two seeds for the NCAA championships. Hayden is a fifth-year senior at 157 pounds. Trent is a redshirt sophomore at 184 pounds. And I think both of those guys – have a shot at winning the whole thing. Um, you know, it's interesting. After the after NC State claimed its third straight ACC title, I got to talk to Pat Papalizio, the head coach, and Trent and Hayden Hydley, and all three of them. I mean, it was like one of the first things out of their mouths were, we're trying to win an NCAA team title. And um, I, that's, that's impressive because most – I don't think a lot of teams are, are thinking like that. And both those guys are thinking like it, and they're in position. They they were good enough to win NCAA, individual NCAA titles. And if you got two guys winning titles, you're right there uh, in the conversation with everybody else, especially when you have as many potential uh, All-Americans as NC State has. The other guy I, I would – want to bring up with with the question as to who can win an NCAA title this year is 125 pounder Jacob Camacho. I mentioned earlier, he's beaten former NCAA finalists in his career. Um, And he's actually within the wrestling media. He's a pretty popular pick to make the finals. Uh, He starts out as the number six seed at 125 pounds in his bracket. He's got the one guy that's beaten him twice this year, Sam Latona, in his half of the bracket. But they won't meet until – if they keep winning, they won't meet until the semifinals. And um, if you can make the semifinals, you got a shot to make the NCAA finals. The problem at 125 pounds is that's where arguably the most dominant wrestler in the country resides in Iowa, Spencer Lee. Um, I don't think anyone uh, in their right mind is picking him to lose – but I, I do think Jacob Camacho has got a really good chance at making the NCAA finals at 125 pounds. And I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. Uh, and that's including, like I said, national wrestling media that's talking about it, not just a couple of NC State homers. Well, you never know what happens in March. March Madness doesn't just apply to basketball. It can apply to all sports. So as you mentioned, if you make it to the semifinals, anything can happen. I like your picks there, Ryan. Now, NC State set its program record with four All-Americans in 2018, and you were telling me off-air before we started this podcast that you think there's a chance that maybe they could break that this year. Who do you have on your All-American watch list? How many could NC State get, and how confident are you that this could be a record-breaking year for this team? Yeah, I really do think so. Um, 
let's just first establish what it means to be an all American. That's like the, the accomplishment in college wrestling and what it requires is a top eight finish in your weight class at the NCAAs. Um, you know, last year there were, I believe six NC state wrestlers that earned some level of all American honors, but they didn't have NCAAs and it was based on seeds, how they gave those out. So I, I kind of, you know, it was a good year last year, obviously, but I kind of throw that out for this conversation. Like you mentioned, um, 2018, the year they tied for fourth nationally as a team, they had four All-Americans on the make the podium is, is another phrase they use um, in the college wrestling world. And, you know, I, I think that's um, entirely doable. And, and I don't think I'm really going out on a limb by saying I, th I think official prediction I'm going to save five All-Americans for the Wolfpack. I think Hayden Heidley, Trent Heidley are locks. Those guys are finishing in the, in the top eight. Jacob Camacho, he's a lock. He's finishing in the top eight. He Again, all three of those guys, I'm going to say they got a good chance to be in the NCAA finals. Outside of that, you got Tariq Wilson, 141-pounder, fifth-year senior. He's a guy who's done it before. He – took the wrestling world by storm in 2018 was the talk of the NCAA tournament. When he placed, he went from unseated to third in the country. Um, they, there's no such thing as unseated anymore. They seed all 33 wrestlers in the bracket now. So that's not even possible, but that just shows you how unexpected it was. Um, if he wrestles like he did in Cleveland that year where he's shooting a lot, that's the key, his aggression and, and constant shooting. If he does that, he can wrestle with anybody in the country at that bracket. It is one of the tougher brackets in the country. It's one of the more unpredictable brackets in the country. But if he's wrestling like that, and, and we, he looked great at the ACC championships. He looked awesome. Uh, he put up bonus points in the ACC finals against Zach Sherman, a guy from North Carolina that beat him the previous year in the ACC finals. And if he's wrestling like that, he can go with anybody in the country. So that gives you uh, four All-Americans right there. And number five, I'm going to say Daniel Bullard gets it done at 164 pounds. He's a guy that, uh, you know, he's he's got his twin Thomas on the team as well. Both of those guys got a shot of doing it, but I would put my money on Daniel doing it. He's just coming from a better starting point. He is the number, uh, I believe, number nine seed. Let me double check that. Excuse me, number eight seed. Um, Thomas is coming from a little bit tougher spot as the seven, uh, 16 seed. So I think Daniel Bullard's got a chance of getting it done, climbing on that podium. He is the one guy who has kind of come out and said, uh, this is my last year. I'm not coming back. They got a free year of eligibility. He's the only guy that's come out on the team and said what he's doing one way or the other. Um, and he said he's going to be moving on. So I think it would just kind of be uh, justice for him to come out win an ACC title, his first, and then go out and make it to the All-American platform for the first time in his career, uh, you know, as he calls it a, a day. But um, And then the other thing I would want to throw out there as well is it's not just All-Americans that can score you points at the NCAA championships. One of the key things is going to be, especially as close as I'm projecting the team race to be, the wrestlebacks, the consolation bracket, where you go after you take your first loss, that's going to provide huge points for teams. And they have what's called the blood round in college wrestling. If you've ever watched wrestling on TV, you've probably heard people say the blood round, and you might be like, what the heck is the blood round? Well, that's where you finish one win shy of all America honor in the consolation bracket. There's only 12 people that, that can make it that far in the tournament. And then that's where they cut from 12 to eight, the top eight who uh, earn all America honors. And I think NC state's got, you know, in addition to those five guys that I said have a, you know, that I'm predicting to be all Americans. I think they got guys who can make it to the blood round. If not further, Jarrett Trombley, the 133 pound red shirt sophomore has never, you know, obviously never wrestled at the NCAA championships before, but he's a guy that split the starting spot this year took fourth in the ACC, and then he gets the 12 seed at the NCAAs, which shows you how deep the ACC was at that weight class. Um, he's totally capable of being a blood round type guy. Flow Wrestling's podcast was do, making NCAA predictions earlier this week. They had three guys giving predictions, and two of them 
pick Trombley to make the blood round. So again, it's not just an NC State homer telling you Trombley can make it to the blood round. And then the other guy, Deontay Wilson, I think he's 100% capable of being a blood round or even an All-American type guy. Um, like I said, he's undefeated this year, won an ACC title, just hasn't really had a, a bunch of resume building opportunities in this weird COVID year and conference only schedule. But um, he's a guy that I think is definitely capable of scoring a lot of team, a lot of team points. And like I said, with as close as this team race is going to be, every team point's going to count. Well, you've got me excited, Ryan. And if you, you a lot of great information there, great preview. Uh, if you want to read more about it, Ryan wrote a great bracket breakdown on thewolfpacker.com. You can check that out. He posted that six days ago. Um, maybe we'll, ha we'll have a link on the message board if you want to check that out. Use promo code PAC60 on thewolfpacker.com for a free 60-day trial on all of our premium content news and analysis. That'll get you on the message board. This bracket breakdown is free, however. Check it out, NC State Wrestling at the NCAA Championships. That'll do it for our NCAA Championships Wrestling Preview Ryan, we will be back tomorrow evening. It'll be late. I'll be watching the NIT game, so I'll be catching up with you after that. You'll be watching all the wrestling. Give us all the lowdown on what happened in St. Louis. Uh, give us a follow on social media. You can follow our main account at The Wolfpacker. You can follow me personally at Justin H. Will, and give Ryan Tice a follow at Ryan Tice. Uh, give us a like on Facebook, NC State Wolfpack on thewolfpacker.com. And again, while you're on thewolfpacker.com, use promo code PAC60 for a free 60-day trial on all of our premium content, news, and analysis. And remember to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever you listen to us. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all that good stuff. Plus, you can always watch this on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And for Ryan Tice, this is Justin Williams, and this has been the Wolfpacker Podcast.